Okay, today is the day that I tackle the clunk. So basically today I'm gonna to replace the uh, sway bar bushings, the ones that connect the sway bar to the frame of the car. I'm gonna replace those today. And I'm gonna try and do it as quickly and as simply as possible. Because basically I don't like to do the work and so I wanna make it fast and simple. So I'm not gonna take off the tires. I'm not gonna disconnect the end links of the sway bar. I'm just gonna go straight for the bushings and see if I can get them out and how fast I can do it. Okay, these are the bushings that I bought and these are Moog. And I'll put a link below where you can get these. These are really cheap, so there's really no cost to these hardly at all. I think I got these for 15 or $19. Anyway, the link will be below. And um, nothing could be simpler, but we're gonna find out how easy it is to get these on. Okay, I did remove the, the front wheels just so there's more light in here so I can actually see. Um, I'm underneath the minivan at the moment, safely supported on jack stands, as you can see. Okay, so um, this looks really difficult because you got the steering rack in the way here and I don't know if you can see, there's a sway bar. There's the sway bar. And the sway bar bracket is right, it's right there. And there's one 14 millimeter bolt and there's another one in the back, but it's really hard to, to reach in here. There's not enough room to get anything in here. And I could maybe go over, but on this side, it's even worse. You got the whole uh, steering rack in the way even more. And I don't know if you can just see, just see in there, that's where the, uh, okay, how am I gonna do this? Okay, the answer is to go in from the back. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but this is the back of the main supporting frame. There's the, there's the A-arms, right there. And this is the exhaust, and you've gotta go in blind right through this gap right here at the back and I can feel the bolts for the sway bar brackets and I just have to go in blind from the back. It's best to go in, it's best to go in from the back. These bolts are really hard to reach. Like I said, I'm going in through the back, behind the main frame support. You can get it on, you can get your ratchet on the, on the nut by feel. And that, oh, oh. Okay, I've got three of the four bolts off. And on the passenger side, I was able to get both bolts from going over from the back side, which was very hard to film because I haven't got the minivan up very high and it's extremely tight in there. So I don't think I could really show you, but on the driver's side, I got the rear bolt out, no problem from the back side. Um, and the front one has been very difficult, it's very tight but I have been able to reach it from the wheel well going through just over the uh, lower control arm here past that big bolt and over to the nut right there right there and I'm able to do a very small movement of course it's a good idea to soak all these bolts with WD-40 before you begin I'm able to move it very slightly as I go back and forth here, but it is coming off and I will get it off. I don't know how I'm gonna get these bolts back in the holes <laughs> after I get this off. So it's one step at a time at this point. I'll just get this one off and then we'll go from there. Okay, I finally got everything out. It certainly did take a bit of contortion. This is Okay, I finally got everything out. It certainly took a bit of work to get it out. I've wrecked my hands again. 
Uh, these are the brackets. These are the bolts. Two bolts for each bracket. 14 millimeter. They came out eventually. These are the brackets and you notice that they have an arrow and that arrow faces towards the front of the car. So when you put this thing back, this is how you do it. You notice that they have a straight hole here and a slightly slotted hole here. So you probably put in the, uh, the front bolt first and then the rear bolt when I reinstall these. Okay, this are, these are the old bushings. They look very, very worn out. Very worn out indeed. Wow. Yeah, they look really worn out. It looks like this sway bar has been uh, sliding back and forth inside this bushing for quite some time. So there you go, that's a worn out bushing. This is the other worn out bushing. You can see how big the hole is. It's been worn larger by the sway bar moving back and forth. And here are the new bushings. You can see how much smaller the hole is compared to the old one. There is the new compared to the old. You can see the difference. Now once I get these in, these are going to tightly grip the uh, sway bar and prevent it from moving back and forth and making that clunky noise. So for all you owners of Mazda 5s or Mazda 3s who have that clunky noise, this is your solution. I know that's easy to think that it's in other parts of the suspension, but most likely it is the sway bar bushings and you should check these out because of course this is cheap. Except for the difficulty of getting to them, the actual cost is cheap. You could do this yourself, save yourself a ton of money. I have no idea what they will charge for this at the dealerships, but you can guarantee, I say 500 bucks for sure. So save yourself the money, do it yourself. So the next step is to get everything back together with the new bushings. Okay, we're ready to put the bushings back in. And again, it might be hard to show this to you because of how confined the area is. Basically, you have to reach up over the subframe and feel as you put everything back in. So, but I'll try and do my best and uh, it should go pretty fast. Now the first step, the first step is to get the uh, new bushings over the bar and of course they have a slit in them as you can see. So we'll just put them over the bar and, uh, and then we gotta put the brackets over that. But this part hopefully should be easy. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little collar on the um, sway bar and you can just barely see it. Maybe I can zoom in, let's see. Don't think it's going to focus, but there you go. There you go. There you go. Sort of focusing or trying to. Yes. See that collar? The rubber bushing goes on the outside of that collar. That collar is designed to stop the sway bar from moving side to side too much. And you can see the worn out area. That's where the bushing is going to go. And that's towards the outside of the vehicle towards the wheel. So that's where you put both rubber bushings. Now I've got the rubber bushing on the bar. I was able to do it from the wheel well instead of underneath the car and then I can just slide it, slide it down the bar to its proper position. That's what I'm doing right now, which of course you cannot see because everything is so difficult. To raise the bar up slightly, push it down. And there we go. Down, down, down. There we go. Okay. Now, perhaps you can see that I've got the uh, I've got the bushing in place, and now you just have to put the bracket over it, and then. Uh, Put the bolt through, feeling it with your fingers because you can't see it, into the two holes, one of which is, I can't even show you that now. Is that a hole? That's a hole. That's a hole there. And yeah, so there you go. 
bushings installed. Here's the one of the brackets ready to go in. This is the bracket for the uh, passenger side. Not that I think there's any real difference, but if you're if you notice, there's a little arrow on the top here, and it's facing this way, meaning the front of the car. That arrow should be facing the front of the car when you put the bracket in. As you can see, one hole is just a hole, and this is elongated. The elongated hole goes towards the back. So, just got to make sure that arrow is facing towards the front of the vehicle. There you go. Now, I don't know if you can see. Let's see, zoom in a bit. I've got the bracket on. Okay, so I've got the bracket on. You can just sort of see it right there uh, over the rubber bushing. And now I've got to install the bolts and cinch everything down. You know what? I found that I can just barely get my hand in here through the wheel well. Right now I'm on the passenger side. And I don't know if I can show you, let's see. Oh yeah, see, I'm starting the bolt, the bolt that's closest to the front of the vehicle. I'm starting this by hand. Yeah. Oh. Where's my hand, where's my hand? Oh, there we go. See, that's the front bolt. There's the bracket, it's over the rubber. And I'm starting it by hand. Now to finish tightening it, I'm still gonna have to go up over the back from underneath the vehicle, but at least from here, I can get it started by hand. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but I did the same thing on the driver's side. I was able to snake my arm in from the wheel well and get the bracket on, the rubber bushing, and start the bolt in the front of the sway bar. As you can see, it's quite a tight confines. You gotta snake your hand in here over the boot of the steering, over the sway bar, and you can do it. Now, if you have, if you got like a larger arm or bigger hands, you might not be able to do it, but I was able to do it. So I tightened that down by hand a little bit, and now we gotta do the rear bolts and then tighten everything up, and the job is almost done. Okay, on the passenger side, I was able to do the final tightening with my ratchet, with my 14 millimeter, and with this long 14 millimeter socket uh, from underneath the vehicle and over the back of the subframe. You can just move it enough that you can actually get it tight. On the driver's side, it's a bit more difficult, a bit more junk in the way. So the rear bolt can be done but the front bolt requires a bit of finagling. Now for the front bolt, I'm using a short 14 millimeter socket and I'm able to get to the front bolt on the bracket from the driver's side wheel well. As you can see, there's just enough room to have a small movement and I'm slowly tightening that bolt down. And then I'll finish off with the rear bolt from underneath the vehicle and from behind the main. Oh, yeah. So you gotta have patience, obviously, to do this. <laughs> it can be done. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna keep working on this. Okay, that bolt is tight. I think it's tight. Tight as I can get it from here. Let's focus, 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 come on, you can do it. Actually, there is another view of the sway bar mount that you can get right here from above, inside the engine compartment, looking down, 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 there we go. And here you can see more clearly that there's a metal collar, there's a metal collar that's on the sway bar, let's see. And that, the sway bar bracket and rubber are on the outside of that towards the wheel side on both ends of the sway bar. 
And of course you can see the two bolts that we're trying to reach. Now it might even be possible to reach from above, at least the front bolt, if you had extremely long extensions for your ratchet, which I do not have. But otherwise you've got to do it from underneath and from the back. Okay, I sure hope that that's taking care of the clunking noise because if it hasn't, I'm gonna go nuts. Okay, so that's how you replace the front sway bar bushings in a 2009 Mazda 5. It also applies to a lot of other years plus Mazda 3. It's not a simple job because of the location, but it can be done and you can save yourself a lot of money. So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.